Welcome. We're Facebook Live. We're inside the Froyland Science Complex. I'm Augustana Athletic Director Josh Morton, joined by head track and field cross country coach Tracy Hellman. Hello. And we are inside one of the real gems of our campus. So we're doing these Facebook Lives Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to get everybody ready for Viking Days for homecoming. Students are still on fall break here on campus, so it's relatively quiet in the Froyland Science Complex. It is quiet. Well, now it is. It wasn't well, a second ago. We were about to go live and the um, fire alarms were being tested, so I'm glad we weren't. <laughs> and we stayed put. Yeah. Um, so, but we have to explain what this is behind us, because this is kind of a uh, institution, I guess, on our campus, even when this building was built, right? Yeah, it was still moving, and since I've been at Augie for 20 years, and this has always been here and always been moving, and I don't probably have the history of it than somebody else could tell, but... I think it's just always a cool sight to come in here, and it's just constantly moving, and there's a special meaning to it, and yeah. I'd like to find out a little more detail about that. But. And even during construction of this building, mm -hmm. they kept it so that it was, the pendulum was still going. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that's really neat. Yeah. And so this, this is also an important area for you, recruiting-wise. This is where, typically, when you have a recruiting weekend, you start at the Froyland Science Complex. Yeah, we really showcase the gem of campus, and we have a lot of students on our team that are nursing majors pre-med majors, yeah. bio majors. And so this is kind of their home anyway. And this is just such a neat complex to be a part of. So we like being here. It is. And, and you know, it's, it's a donor-driven project. Donor gifts help make this thing happen. And it's a, I, I love it because when you come down 33rd Street, it's really a welcoming site to for our sure. campus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It really, really sets a great tone. And I know most of our sports actually use this for uh, their recruiting when they have large groups. Yeah. Uh, football will be in here on Saturday. So part of, the, part of homecoming is uh, all four of our uh, fall sports are in competition this weekend. You have some of your team going down to Yankton, yep. uh, down to Yankton to run on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, that'll be an opportunity where we gonna, we're going to run uh, probably half of our squad, uh, give our younger kids an opportunity to get some experiences and it's, it's a new meet. I haven't been to it yet, and, but uh, it's supposed to be nice. It's supposed to be good weather, good competition, and so we're excited to kind of see what, we're, what we can see, you know, get out of those kids on Saturday. Yeah, and you know, you're top six in the country uh, for both programs, yeah. and pretty pleased now with gone through three meets with yeah, your team? Yeah, we are. You know, this year's a little bit of an unusual year, and I've told people that. It's uh, a festival year, so every four years, the NCAA Division II has a fall festival. They have a winter festival and a spring festival. And so what that means is you have volleyball, you have men's and women's soccer, you have field hockey, and you have men's and women's cross country all on the same site the same weekend. And based on all yeah. the different sports, they try to have, make the calendar work. So it's a little bit of a later year for us. So December 1st is our national, which is kind of crazy to think because <laughs> we're still seven weeks away from that. But within that, you have to kind of just alter a few of your training yeah. and your uh, scheduling. And so for us, our, our schedule has been a little bit different this year, but it's been really good. Our, our teams are racing really well, feel good about where we're at. Uh, we still can be a little bit better, and, uh, but championship season uh, is right around the corner, and uh, that's when uh, we're hopefully going to shine. And a festival year really forces you to kind of change up your schedule, right? I mean, it, yeah. because it's so much later, and I, you know, I know you and I have talked to the you know hopefully an advantage for a northern school in December in Pittsburgh. I don't want to think well, too far ahead. Well, but no, the average temp in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on December first is <laughs> thirty six. I think we looked okay. that up, All and right. so the uh, the odds are probably in our favor. It's going to yeah. be a little snowy, a little cold, and that, that's okay for us. A little fun fact: the last time, uh, well, the only time, but still a special moment. Our women won the national title. Spokane, Washington, it snowed. So Perfect. snow is good for us. I like it. So bring, bring the snow. Yeah, absolutely. Bring on the snow. And that is uh, one of the banners you see, national championship banners that you see hanging in the Elman Center. Softball, cross country, basketball, and baseball this past yeah. summer. So, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Um, all right. Uh, to talk about recruiting-wise, because you, you have one of the largest rosters when you can combine track and field cross country on our campus. Of course, it's both men's and women's programs. Yep. So your recruiting philosophy uh, within the region, how yeah. do you go about it? Well, also, I want to also mention that uh, I have some really good help that uh, yeah, helped me do. get there with Greg Binstock, Scott Tannis, uh, Emma Spangola is our, fir is our first year GA, and uh, we all work collaboratively to pro you know, tr try to bring in the best student yeah. athletes we can. And it's a little bit difficult in the track and field world because we're trying to cover all the events. Yeah. And uh, you know, we don't maybe cover all the events as, as best as we hope, but we still do a really good job, I feel, of getting a certain number of kids in certain events. And so we're, I would say, Midwest regionally. Yeah. Uh, we, we try to find those kids that are looking for a school like Augustana. And, uh, but we branch out a lot of different areas. You know, we got kids from Colorado, kids from Montana, kids uh, from Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota. Um, you know, we've had kids from Wyoming. We get kids from all over the place. Yeah. And so uh, 
I think academically we really start off there and try to find those kids that are looking for a strong academic school, and then we kind of also you know find the the time, the marks, the you know the stats yep. that fit what we're trying to do at a national level. So it's it's been a it, it's always a process, as yeah. all coaches would tell you. Yep. But um, I feel I, I'd like to think that I've learned as I've gotten older that I've, I've done a better job of identifying the Augie type of kids. Yeah. And I know that's, you know, what does that mean? I just think there's some kids that are really gravitate to a school like Augie. Yeah. They like the small private institution. They like the focus, uh, you know, the Christian focus, the, the small class focus. Yeah. Um, also being in a bigger city. I mean, there's always tangibles that kids are looking for, you know? Yeah. And I think as a coach, you need to kind of identify and, and try to prioritize. Yeah, and we, we've said, you know, the, the future for Augustana, the future for Augustana Athletics, it's exciting being a part of Sioux Falls, a dynamic, yeah, growing absolutely. community when you look at the projections of what this city um, will be. I had a great conversation yesterday with one of your student athletes who was coming to get his run in, a local freshman from Sioux Falls, Washington. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, he, and he was uh, he's excited about his season so far. So That's it's cool. always nice when they come down to the end of the hallway at mm-hmm. the, to the AD's mm-hmm. office, they don't always make it that far. They don't. So <laughs> luckily there wasn't many people around. So <laughs> he came uh, and talked to me. Um, the the can't talk Augustana cross country without talking about Twilight. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's a, yeah. And uh, for people that uh, are familiar with it, you kind of know what it is. It's 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 not your typical cross country meet. It's kind of kind of an event. I, I like to say it's a it's a it's a rock concert uh, with with runners that are yep. you, know, you happen to be there. Um, it's it's a vision that I I started. Uh, this is our eighth year and. It started with, with just a thought that, man, we can make something pretty neat out of our sport. And, you know, cross country is a sport that uh, I think maybe it, it, you don't maybe get a lot of fanfare based a lot of times, too, because you go to these, these meets and the kids, they go and they take off running. And as you're a fan, you don't <laughs> see them, you know, till they come back to the finish line. And I wanted to try to bring the fans with, into the meet. Yeah. I, I wanted them to be a part of what makes it so, so special. And... Um, so it just started with a vision that I thought we could maybe do something different, you know, make cross country different um, in a good way. Yeah. Um, and it's it's exploded on me that I didn't realize it was going to be as as really as as big and just as exciting as it was. Oh, and something else. <laughs> and so now we're not trying necessarily to grow it. We're trying to contain it. <laughs> and uh, we had over 2000 runners last year. Yeah. And um, it's, it's it's a highlight of our season. The kids absolutely love it. Yeah. And uh it's it's fun. It's just a fun kickoff. Yeah, you know, that's why I, I look at it as a kickoff. You know, kickoff the year at the twilight. And so it uh, does. And and I I was so impressed because you know it ends pretty late, but mm-hmm. you know all of our student athletes are there ready to pick up. Yeah, ready to clean yeah, up. You know, I think runners they're always they don't run at night much. You know, yeah. they run in the the daytime at the track meets or in the cross country meets or in the morning at ten a.m. eleven a.m. And so for them to to run. 8 30 9 p.m under the lights music i mean they literally feel they're in a different environment and yeah. so it's uh it's 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 something that i think they really enjoy so uh-huh. we've just tried to grow it try to make it different and we're always trying to be innovative and yeah. so can we do something even more special with it and yeah. uh we, we hope so that's pretty innovative yeah. uh so it's a reminder so we're in the froyland science complex and down in the basement here and the, the pendulum is a pretty special special piece of art in this building because it's been swinging even through construction of this building. So uh, it's pretty neat. We thought we'd give you a taste of campus. It's homecoming week here. Uh, Viking days start officially tomorrow when the students get back to town. We've got volleyball and soccer at home on Friday, football at home on Saturday, volleyball at home on Saturday night, and then soccer celebrates senior day uh, on Sunday. And Coach Barkas and I did this yesterday, so it's still up if you want to watch it. Yeah, you can see uh, Coach Barkas because now I have some fun questions for you. Oh, right. Here we go. You ready? I'm ready. It's kind of rapid fire, so it's got to be the first thing that comes to your mind. Boom. If you had one concert you could go to for the rest of your life. Decemberist, easy. Decemberist. Yep, uh, it's an indie band out of Portland, yep, Oregon. Yep. Okay. My wife turned me on. I was going to so. say, it sounds like something your wife got you yep, on too. Yep, she did. Okay, pro sports team. Uh, 49ers. 49ers? Yeah, I, I grew up in San Francisco, kind of okay. Joe Montana, Jerry Rice. And I don't you know, follow football as much, but that's that that's one that kind of always – and they last night uh, they were playing. And yeah, I, I, I finished past my bedtime. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're a sports hero growing up. Sports hero, uh, uh, Billy Mills is a famous oh, yeah, Olympian absolutely. from South Dakota absolutely. that got the gold medal, uh, yeah. a Native American. It has a really special story and uh-huh. you know tied to South Dakota. And so I have a, a video that I show to my team every year. It's kind of a Billy Mills type story, and it's an inspirational story. And I got to meet oh, him cool. one time too, and he's he's really an, an unbelievable uh, individual. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. Very, very fitting for yeah. the uh, cross country yeah. guy who grew up running cross country. 
All right, so your choice. You can run in 30 degrees and no wind or 85 and a slight breeze. No wind. Uh, so I take the cold weather anytime. You runners. No I, the wind's no good. Like, yeah. nobody likes wind. Um, if, I don't even know if kite flyers like wind. I mean, it's just like there's nothing really good about a wind. Yeah, and so, true. you know, the worst, two, two of the worst words that in my vocabulary, wind chill. I, I, who yeah. likes wind chill? Yeah, nobody. Like, yeah, nobody does. Yeah, yeah. so. Get out, get rid of the winds. Build, we need to build walls and mountains in South Dakota. And I think that's probably not even sports specific. So I can speak as an undersized quarterback who wasn't very good. I hated the wind. Yeah. Because I, I didn't have a strong enough arm no. to throw through the wind. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, you passed. All right, good. Good yeah. job. Yeah. All right, so tomorrow we'll uh, be in Facebook Live with our volleyball coach, Jen Jacobs, and then Thursday, Jerry Olszewski from Augustana Football as we get ready for homecoming weekend. Uh, can't forget, too, Friday, we induct the newest class yeah. into the Augustana Athletics Hall of Fame. We have a track kid going in. Yes, we do. Uh, Jen Beiske, uh, national champion in the Javelin. Uh, awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm losing track of the year when she competed, but uh, it was I remember it was in uh, North Carolina, and you were at that same site this I year. I was, yeah. Um, but that's where, she, uh, that's where she oh, awesome. uh, uh, competed. Um, and... Um, did she was that where she won it or did she? Uh, I know she competed there. I just I'm thinking yeah, her yeah. competing. It's hard to put the time and the, the places <laughs> together. But but she was awesome, uh, awesome kid for us. I'm excited to to reconnect yeah. with her this weekend. I, the Hall of Fame is such a special night because you're really celebrating the best of the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. and to be to be a Hall of Famer is a big deal. So I for can't sure. wait to induct this uh, this latest class on Friday night uh, downtown at the Holiday Inn. So I guess that'll do it for us from the Foreland Science Complex. As uh, more and more Augie 80s and coaches come through here, the pendulum will still be swinging. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Great way to finish. All right.